Shabbat Shalom. We invite everyone. We invite everyone to be seated. to page 99. I'm going to ask that everyone please stop talking. The time for tefillah, the time for prayer has begun. The time for talking is just with the heavens. Page 99. Thank 
כל יום לכם לחסד ולחמים בעיניך ובין יכולו הן ותגמלנו חסדים טובים ברוך אתה אדוני כל חסדים טובים לעמו ישראל ברוך שאמרתי, 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 ברוך שאמרתי,
הציבור של יום השבת, טוב להודות לנו מזמור של יום השבת, ולזמר לשמך היום.
הגדול בכבוד שבך, גיבור לנצח, והנורא בנורותיך, מלך היושב על כיסא רם ונישא. וכתוב, רננו צדיקים באדוני לשרים נבט תהילה, וישר אם תתעלה. ובלשון חסידות תתרומה, כאב כנושים ותתקדם. 
ונו זולתך מלכן לחיי העולם הבא ואפס בלתך גול אל לימות המשיח ונדום אליך מושיענו לתחיית המתים Oh, 
שסים בבואה, עושים בהמה רצון כל המלכבות, נותן לשמור צהורה ורינה לזכר מלכותו.
תרפתנו לשמך, הגדול סלע באמת, להודות לך ולייחדך באהבה. ברוך אתה אדוני, הבוחר בעמו ישראל, באהבה. תור ודור קיים ושמו קיים וכיסו נכון ומלכותו ואמונתו לעד קיימת ובנת חיי קיימים ונאמנים אליך
Ah, ah, ah. 
עלינו ועל כל ישראל במרוא אמן. Sadie Sklar becoming a bat mitzvah, and Joshua Kovacs becoming a bar mitzvah, and invite them to lead us in Seder Hotza Torah, page 
This is the day we had been anticipating and expecting <coughs> to call for the Dvar Torah Rabbi Sarah Krinsky. Shabbat Shalom. As part of my constant search for new recipes, I recently requested access to a group on Facebook that a number of my friends had recommended. I don't cook, but I give out recipes, the group is called. <laughs> and though the name does not immediately give this away, the group is in fact comprised of tens of thousands of Jews, mostly Jewish women, some of whom I think are actually also in this room. <laughs> the group's Jewish character is sort of vague. Most of the recipes shared are kosher, though not all. Some are holiday themed, though not necessarily. However, in order to gain access into this apparently elusive and exclusive group, I had to answer a series of questions designed, it seemed, to test my Judaism. Do you know kosher? The first question asked. Sure. Next. Do you cook kosher? Also sure. Next. What are your two favorite holidays and explain why? <laughs> ah, a trick question. Well, the trick was not going to work on me. I was not going to put just any holidays. I was not going to out myself as a Hanukkah Yom Kippur Jew or God forbid a Thanksgiving Memorial Day lover. This was a test of my Jewishness after all. The Omer and Pesach Sheni, I cheekily replied. <laughs> Within a matter of minutes, my request to enter the group was approved. <laughs> and yes, the Omer and Pesach Sheni are decidedly inside baseball kind of holidays. Discussed and debated in our ancient literature, in rabbinic rabbit holes, and apparently in contemporary Facebook groups, but not necessarily greeted with much fanfare in the life of our calendars or even communities. But these two holidays, the Omer and Pesach Sheni, these two moments in the Jewish calendar, can straddle and help uncover a question that I think is central to our religious and spiritual lives. Facebook posts aside, 
The Omer truly has, been, has always been a favorite time and practice of mine. Part of me is drawn to the deep and methodical ways in which spiritual work and personal improvement is broken down and prioritized in this period. And part of me resonates with the important message of the journey that must be taken from Mitzrayim to Sinai, from slavery to Torah, from the forces that constrain us to those that liberate us. But much of my pull to the Omer comes from the particularities of the mitzvah itself and the rush, the exhilaration, and even the competition inherent in it. You see, counting the Omer is conceptualized in our text as one mitzvah that lasts over a period of 49 days. One command realized in 49 discrete moments. And because of this, one can only fully fulfill one's obligation if one counts each and every night, 49 times over. And in fact, our halachic codes note that should one forget to count the Omer for even one day, one may not continue the following day with the attached bracha, with the blessing. When counting the Omer, you have one strike, one miss, one day of forgetfulness, and you're out. What a contrast then to a holiday that falls each year right in the middle of the Omer, right in the middle of this period of one strike and you're out, yet is laden with the opposite message. Pesach Sheni, which falls each year on the 14th day of Iyar, on the 29th day of the Omer. And unlike the Omer, Pesach Sheni, whose very name means second Pesach, second Passover, is a holiday all about second chances. In the midst of their wandering through the desert, God instructed the Israelites to mark, to remember the Exodus by bringing a Pesach offering on the, on the afternoon of the 14th of Nisan, to roast the meat over the fire and to eat it with matzah and bitter herbs, a command that we make manifest at our own Sidarim year after year. As they lived out this practice though, the Israelites noticed a flaw. At any given time, certain members of the community were bound to be ritually impure. In particular, there were those who had been in recent contact with a dead body, likely to bury a loved one. And this impurity, though commendable and even obligatory, prevented disqualified the mourners from being able to offer the Pesach sacrifice. As a response to this flaw, this injustice, brought to God's attention by the people through Moses and Aaron, God established Pesach Sheni, second Pesach, exactly a month later as a second chance to offer this sacrifice. And what I'll contend, and in a few minutes what you'll hopefully agree, is that this difference, this distinction between the Omer and Pesach Sheni is not just a question of when to count and when to sacrifice. Instead, I believe, it is an essential question of what sort of Judaism we want to live. And we are presented here with two very different options. In Omer Judaism, every moment has to count. Every day requires intense presence and attention. Every second is a second that must be infused with holiness and intention. You must seize this moment because when it's gone, it will never come again. One strike and it's gone. In Omer Judaism, you must never let a single day pass you by. In Pesach Sheni Judaism, some days just pass you by. Some moments you're just not in sync. In Pesach Sheni Judaism, there are always paths to come back and there are always second chances. This question, this tension, rattles all around our Jewish life, practices, and thought. Sure, it's found in these maybe low-stakes holidays, but it also lives in some of the most fundamental and consequential corners of our tradition. Tonight, for example, we begin the holiday of Shavuot, 
tied by our rabbis to the celebration of revelation, the commemoration of divine encounter that left the Torah behind in its wake. And even within this holiday, even within our tradition's representation of revelation, of receiving Torah, we bump up against our two types of Judaism. We bump up against Omer and Pesach Sheni. Here, configured into the question, did revelation happen all at once, or does it continue? Was revelation a moment, an event that could be experienced once and then never again? Or was there, and does there continue to be, a process of revelation that can be revisited and re-experienced again and again? Even our ancient rabbis grappled with this question. In an amazing sugya, an amazing passage in the Talmud, there is a debate between Rabbi Yochanan and his study partner, Reish Lakish. Rabbi Yochanan asserts that Torah Megillah Megillah Nitzna, the Torah was given scroll by scroll, incrementally, in pieces, over time. Reish Lakish disagrees, saying that the Torah was given in its entirety by God to Moses on top of Mount Sinai, as the Torah itself describes. One discrete moment, one transmission, one encounter, one strike. And amazingly, this debate seems to be located even in the Torah itself. The traditional view, the view that we'll spend tomorrow recollecting and celebrating, does indeed imagine a Torah handed down to Moses in one ecstatic moment of lightning, thunder, sound, and song. But even the Torah knows that the story did not end there. Because in fact, there seems to be a whole strand of biblical law, biblical interpretation and editing and rewriting happening already in the Torah. We read that there was a formalized process for petitioning God to clarify or amend existing law in the face of new circumstances. The Mishkan, the Ohel Moed, provided the context for this form of revelation. Moses or Aaron would enter the Mishkan armed with their challenge or their question and would emerge with a new answer, a new law. Emerge having experienced continual revelation, manifesting a relationship with God and a process of creating Torah that was and is ongoing, that persists, that had and has room for second chances. And to bring this full circle, Pesach Sheni itself is an example of such law giving, such revelation, happening not at Sinai, not in that singular moment, but over time, in real time, in the Mishkan. And so we are left with these two frameworks, these two containers that are filled in contrast with one another, with various texts and traditions and practices from across our Jewish life. Omer Judaism, Sinai Judaism, the Judaism of peak moments that take hold of our hearts and then pass us by, the Judaism of highlights, the Judaism of graduations and ordinations and weddings and birthdays and b'nai mitzvah, the Judaism of the moments that come around once in a lifetime, and if we blink, they've passed us by, so don't blink, don't miss a moment. Pesach Sheni Judaism, Mishkan Judaism, the Judaism of past but not necessarily gone, the Judaism of moments that yes have passed but that leave responsibility in their wake, that leave second chances in their wake, that leave behind the opportunity to wake up tomorrow and do it again, do it better, circle back and improve in their wake. Omer Judaism, Sinai Judaism, Pesach Sheni Judaism, Mishkan Judaism. My answer, which will not surprise us, is that of course we are called to live our lives with both. But how we do so, how we combine and live amongst and between these Judaisms is represented and symbolized in another of my favorite Jewish rituals. And it's a ritual that's referenced in our Parsha this week. This morning, we read about the tribe's placement around the Mishkan, organized meticulously in tightly formed concentric circles. Why that arrangement, the rabbis ask? In his commentary, the Bahor Shor notes 
that the tribe's circles around the Mishkan is connected to the circles a couple makes around one another before entering their chuppah at a wedding. And his resonance, his reference to a wedding doesn't come out of nowhere. In our Haftarah this week, we read the phrase ve'erasichli, which is commonly recited at weddings, and Shavuot itself is a reenactment of a wedding of sorts between Israel and God. And it's this circling, this ritual that I so love, that comes alive for me in an explanation that I always repeat to couples under the chuppah, where I remind them that through this circling, yes, they are symbolically making one another the center of their lives, committing to building their homes and shaping their lives around one another. But they are doing something else too. They're also creating and enacting and sanctifying the inevitable ups and downs that they will face as a couple. As these two individuals circle around one another, they notice that there are times in which they come out of view of each other. When they do that though, when that happens, they keep walking, they keep circling, they keep walking knowing that if they keep placing one foot in front of the other, eventually they'll come back into full view. And that is what we celebrate under the chuppah. That is what we commit to in each of our de deepest relationships. The faith that in the moment when we are two ships passing in the night, when we are unaligned and when we can't see eye to eye, the faith in those moments that this disjunction is temporary. The faith that through mutual work and commitment, we will make our way back into view. At each wedding that I'm at, this paradox is striking to me. Here two people are on their way to an Omer moment, on their way to a Sinai moment. A moment that says today our lives change today and no other day. After today it will be different and new, so don't we dare blink, don't we dare miss this chance. At that very time, we enact this disjunctive circling. We enter the chuppah with the ritual that says, sure, you are committing to something new and something different and something momentous, but it won't happen all at once, and every day won't be like today. You'll also have days when you mess up and days when you miss your chance, and even days when you want to close your eyes and let time pass you by. You will crave, you will need those moments of Pesach Sheni, those moments of Mishkan, our circling tells us. You will need those moments of second chances and of improving and of doing better next time. This then is our model. This is our reconciliation. This is our reminder that counting the Omer is our goal, that Sinai is an ideal, that the holiday we celebrate tonight is about reaching and celebrating large, grandiose moments that happen once and then they're gone. Omer Judaism, Sinai Judaism, Chuppah Judaism, we hold these ideals up before us, we bring them close and we let ourselves touch them and experience them and celebrate them and love them. And then we come down from the mountain. And then we reconnect with reality. And we realize that looking up at the mountain, walking forward to the chuppah, also means wading through desert sand along the way. Also means circling out of view. So on our paths to Sinai, we give ourselves permission for this too. We give our sp ourselves space to try again and we find holiness in that. This is a season of Sinai. It is a time of graduations, it is a time of weddings, it is a time of b'nai mitzvah, and it is a time of revelation on a mountain. I had my own Sinai, my own Omer moment just a few days ago as I was ordained as a rabbi, and I celebrate that. Let's celebrate, and on Monday night, when the Omer is over and the holiday goes out and reality comes back in, let's also recommit and reaffirm the process it takes to get us there with all of the ups and downs and God willing, all of the second chances and the Pesach Shanies along the way. Shabbat Shalom.
This morning's reading, Parshat Bemidbar, as we open the reading of the fourth book of the Chumash, the fourth book of the Torah, begins on page 774, with the beginning of the second chapter of the book of Numbers, 774. ויעזור ויגן ויושיע לכל החוסים בו ולומר אמן. הכל הבו גודל לאלוהינו תנו כבוד לתורה. תמון, משפחת הבת מצווה על העלייה הראשונה. ברוך שנתן תורה לעמו ישראל בקדושתו ואתם הדבקים בנו לאלוהיכם. חיים כולכם היום. ברוך אדוני מבורך לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים ונתן לנו את תורתו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. אמן. וידבר אדוני אל משה אל אחרון לאמור he shall do love out of the fate of Yachanu Bene Israel, me naked, Savi, Blochom, Wade, Yachanu, Yachanim, Kaid, Mami, Zracha, Dega, Machane, Huda, Letzi, Votam, Venasi, Livne, Huda, Nachshon, Venamina, Dab, Utva, Kudahem, Arba'a v'shivim Elef v'shish me'ot V'chachonim alaf matei Yisachar V'nasi l'ivnei Yisachar Netanel ben tuwar V'tvot v'kudav Arba'a v'chamishim Elef v'arba me'ot Matei zivulun V'nasi l'ivnei zivulun Eliyab ben Chaylon, Utva, Uf Kudav, Shiva, Vachamishim, Elef, Ve'arba me'ot, Ko'aputim, Lamachane Yehuda, Me'at Elef, Ve'shmonim Elef, Ve'sheshat Alafim, Ve'arba me'ot, Otsivotam, Rishona Yisai. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet, Bechaye Olam Nata Betochenu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Tamon, 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 Bachura batim batamitsva, Sara bat ava veliezer, Lalia shniha. Barafu is under an eye, Hombora. Baruch and an eye of Rachel and Bad, Baruch at Ajanai, Eloheinu Melacholam. אשר בחר בנו מכל המים ונתן לנו את תורתו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. דגל מחנה ראובן תימן על הציבותם ונשיא לבני ראובן אל יצור בן שדה אור 
We call to the third Aliyah, those who mark your site this coming week to please come up. to the fourth aliyah, those who wish to recite the Mishiberach, a prayer of healing for someone who is ill.
ברוך אדוני מבורך לעולם ועד. שבירך אבותינו אברהם יצחק ויעקב ואמותינו שרה רבקה רחל ולאה וברך וירפא את החולים הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא רחמים עליהם להחזיק עמו רבותם וישלח להם מהר הרפואה שלמה מן השמיים רפואת הנפש ורפואת הגוף בתוך שאר החולים וחזק את ידי העוסקים בצורכיהם שבת עמי לזעוק ורפואה שלמה קרובה לבוא אשתה בגלו בזמן קריב וכן יהי רצון ונאמר אמן ופאנזירי אל נאמן כי אתה רופא אומן. את ראשי שורך על אישי ותן כוח לנפשי. תעמוד עמליה בדוב וטוב על עלייה החמישית Amen. <laughs> אשר ציווה אדוני את משה, כן נכנו לדגליהם וכן נשאו איש למשפחותיו על בית אבותיו. 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam Asher natan lanu Torah emet v'chaye olam Dota b'tochenu Baruch atah Adonai noten ha'torah Amen Mi shibirach avotenu Avraham, Yitzhak ve'yakov V'imotenu sara rifka l'achel ve'lea May the one who blessed our ancestors Bless our beloved Penny who ascends today to honor God, the Torah, and Shabbat, and to thank God for all the blessings that God has bestowed upon her from the day of her birth until today, in which she turns 80. May God protect you from all disease and illness and bless you with a long life filled with good health and love. And you've been here present in this community for decades. And you have formed here a family. You have found here a channel for all of the longings of your heart in Chesed, which you have dedicated yourself and devoted for years, for years, to people who are ill in our community, who people who are mourning. You have devoted yourself to justice. You've devoted yourself to prayer. You've participated in countless retreats and celebrations and also held people in difficult and challenging times. You couldn't be more core to this community. You have served and continue to serve God through this community of ours. And we bless you that you may continue with strength and with vigor to find joys and celebrations and that we may share many, many moments ahead. May you live a long life together with your beloved Steve and all of us who really adore you and admire you for all the wonderful things that you do and who you are. May we celebrate in joy and blessing and let us say amen. Yamdu, 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 Harav Sara Yael Batuvio Miriam, Harav Betzalel Rafi Ben Herschel Mendel, Vedina Chava, Harav Mordechai Meir Ben Shaul Betzipor. <laughs> לעלייה שישית, חזקו. Shabby Harsinai, 
ואלה שמות בני אהרון הבכור נדב, ואביהו הוא אלעזר ואיתמר, אלה שמות בני אהרון הכהנים המשוכים, אשר מילא ידם לכהן, וימות נדב ואביהו לפני אדוני בהקריבם. אש שרה לפני אדוני במדבר סיני ובנים לא היו להם ויכהן אלעזר ואיתמר על פני אהרון אביהם Amen. Please rise. Mishabera Chavotin Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov Imotinu Sarah Rivka Rachel Leia. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless Sarah, Harav Sarah Yael Batuvia Miriam, and Daniel Harav Betzalel Raphael Ben Herschel Mendel Medina Chava, and Luca. Harav Mordechai Meir Ben Shaul Betzipora, who begin their journeys as rabbis. May God grant you the blessings of faith, wisdom, creativity, passion, sensitivity, and patience. May your heart reflect understanding, your mouth speak wisdom, and your tongue carry forth song. May you lead the people of Israel with love, courage, and integrity in times of gladness and in times of sorrow. May your eyes be enlightened with the light of Torah, so that you may bring your congregation and your students closer to Torah, Kedusha, to real commitment to heal God's world and to feel God's presence and hear echoes of God's voice. May you heal and be healed. May you offer peace and find peace. May you love and be truly loved. Amen.
Amen. Vaid a bear to nigh, El Moshe the Moor, Hakrave at Mata E. Levi, the Amata Oto, Leaf Nea, Haron Hakohain, Vishar Tu Oto, Vishamu at Mishar Tu, Vet Mishmerd Koha Eda, Leaf Nea, O Homo Aid, La Vod at Avar Mishkan, Ven Vishamu at Kokle, O Homo Aid. Let me smear it beneath Israel. Love, that I've got a Mishkan. Venatata Talvim, Laharon, all the Nav, Netunim, Netunim, Hemalo, Neid, Bene Israel. Vetaron, Vet Banav, Chief Code. Veshamirut, Kehunetam, Vazar her grave, you might. Vayad Verdonai, almost shall they more. Vani. Hine la rati talvim, mitoch bene Israel, tachat kol bechor, peterechem mi bene Israel, vayuli halavim, kili kol bechor, beyom hakoti kol bechor, veeret mitraim, hikdashti li kol bechor be Israel. May Adam ad vehemon, lihi you on ye adonai. Baruchat Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah demet, v'chaye olam nata v'tokhenu, Baruchat Adonai, Eloheinu Torah. Amen. Please rise. Amen. Please rise. 
יעמדו העולים להגבהת התורה ולגלילת התורה. וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לפני בני ישראל על פי אדוני ביד משה May be seated. Josh will now offer his Devar Torah. And then we'll, uh, Josh and Sadie will uh, chant the Haftarah, which can be found on page 787. Shabbat Shalom. First of all, I want to congratulate Tadia on her bat mitzvah, and I'm so happy I can share this occasion with you all. This week's Torah portion, Bamid Bar, is a record of the census of the Jews who escaped Egypt and are traveling through the wilderness to the Promised Land. In the part that lists Aaron's family, the Torah reminds us of a story from the book of Leviticus about the first two sons of Aaron, Nadav and Avihu, who got consumed by God's fire for sacrificing the wrong way. In the telling of Nadav and Avihu's story, from a few weeks ago, we learned that they took their incense pans and put fire and incense in them. And then they offered an unauthorized fire before God, which he did not command them to do. After this, God burned them up and they died before God. When I looked into it, I found, that, I found out that Nadav and Avihu are mentioned five times in the Bible. Each time their whole story is summarized, their crime and their punishment repeated over and over and over and over and over. God must have had some reason for smiting them with fire, and the Torah must have had some reason for mentioning it so many times. At first, it would seem that God's response was a little extreme, and the punishment was too much just for sac offering a sacrifice that they were not commanded to offer. Why would God do such a terrible thing? Historically, the rabbis have struggled to understand. One theory is that Nadav and Avihu went too far that they were over-enthusiastic and misguided. One Midrash, the Sifra, offers that Nadav and Avihu were so overjoyed by God's acceptance of the initial sacrifice that they decided to add another offering. Their enthusiasm and excitement led them to perform additional deeds without thinking them through. In this way, their love of God overtook their fear of God. I think this is the big takeaway because it's a warning. A warning to stay away from thinking you know better than God. The Torah puts a reminder the Torah puts a reminder of the story of Nadav and Avihu in this week's parsha, which is mostly about counting men who could be ready for war. Maybe it is written this way because it is a warning that even in war, people should stay within boundaries. Without enough fear of God, people can get violent, thinking that they must exterminate the non-followers or commit crimes because they know what their divine one wants. Perhaps God was trying to prevent this extremism with the killing of Aaron's first two sons. As I have grown up, I wonder if things would be different if the lesson from the story was learned. There are so many instances in our world when religious fundamentalists have let their misguided ideas lead to terrible things. Had people heeded this warning, then maybe 9-11 might not have happened. Yigal Amir, the young Jewish extremist who assassinated Israeli Prime Minister Rabin in 1995 said, I acted alone and on orders from God. Maybe he wouldn't have acted this way if he had listened to God's warning from this story. Maybe, he wouldn't ha maybe we wouldn't have woken a few years ago to read in the news about the Paris attack that killed more than 120 people at a nightclub. I wish these people had learned from God's message of the death of Ndav and Avihu. And then I remember that the majority of people in this world know not go to these extremes. At BJ, I have learned to practice a Judaism that does not include this type of extremism. I feel lucky to have grown up in a place that reminds us about caring for each other, that pushes the boundaries of thought and encourages action, but does so with the goal of making the world a better place. I'm glad that some people, really most people, did understand the message from this story. Shabbat Shalom.
Josh and Sadie will now uh, chant the Haftarah, which can be found once again on page 787. Baruch Adonai Elohim Baruch Adonai Habokhe batara uv Moshe avdo uv Yisrael amo uvin vie ha'emet v'asedek v'haya mispar b'nei Yisrael kehom hayam asher lo yimad velo yisafer v'haya bimkom Asher yeyamer lahem lo ami atem Yeyamer lahem b'nei yochai B'nei kbetu B'nei Yehuda u'b'nei Yisrael yachta V'shamu lahem Rosh echad ve'li min ha'aretz Ki gadol yom Yisrael Imru lachichem ami V'lachotichem ruchama Rivu vimechem rivu ki hi lo yada ve ano hi lo isha ve taser zani neha mi panaha ve nafu ve hami ben shadaha ve nafshi ten aruma ve hi tzaktiha ke yom hi valeda ve samtiha ke hamibar ve shatiha ke eretzia Vehamitiha batama, the et baneha lo arachen, kibne zenunim hema, ki zaneta imam, ho visha haratam, ki amera elha, achare vai, notne lachmi me mai, tsamri ufishti, tsamni vishikuyai. Lachen, hina nisa cheter kech basirim, egadar ti ged gedera, un ti vote lo timsa, veri da fa et mea veha, velo tasi gotam, uviksha tam velo timsa. Vamera elcha veshuva elishi harishon, kitovli azmeata. Vehi lo yada'a Ki anuhi natati la Hadagan veti reshvedchar Vechazavir biti la Vezahav asu la ba'a Lachen Ashuv Vilakakti Vilakakti degani veto Veti roshi bermawada, vehit salti tamri ufishti, lecha sot etervata. Veata agale et nabluta, leine me acha vecha, veish soyati lena, miati, vehish pati, komitsusa. Pagachucha, the Shabbata, the Homuata, the Hashimuti, Gafna, Uteinata, Asher, Amra, Edna, Himali, Asher, Nanuli, Meaha, Fai, the Santim, Lea, Ar, Bahalatam, Hayat, Hasadeh, Ubakadati, Alecha etimei habelim, asher taktir lachem, vata ad nizma vechoyatam, vatilech achare, meacha vecha verti shachachan umadunai, lachen, hinei anochi mefatecha, vecholakticha chamid bar, vidibarti aliba, venatati lad keramecha, Misham pet emek achor lepetach Ki kvach anta shama Ki mei neurecha uchim Alotam eretz mitraim Vechayat vayom hahu 
is celebratory, not aggressive. <laughs> celebratory. No more. Shh. Sadie will now offer her Devar Torah. Shabbat Shalom. I just want to congratulate Josh. You did great. Today's parasha is the meat bar, in which God reintroduces the idea of a census or accounting of the individuals within each Israelite tribe. This is the second time God commands Moses and Aaron to take a census of the people, this time for the purpose of who is viable for the army, and those who will be able to protect the people as they make their way toward the Promised Land, and to protect the Ohelmoed, the tabernacle that holds the Ten Commandments. One of the major questions that emerges from this very detailed accounting is the idea of counting itself. Why count the Israelites, and what are the ethical implications for doing so? Rashi, a medieval French rabbi who lived between 1040 and 1105, told us that God counts each person because God wants it to be known that each person is valued as an individual, and that as individuals has to be responsible for our own actions. Rashi's grandson, known as Rashbam, does not agree with Rashi. He thought that it has nothing to do with God caring about us, just as the Israelites need to defend themselves as a nation, and to identify the structure of their army, they must have a census. I think Rashbam is right, because I think God's sole purpose of the census 
was to get numbers for army troops. God's intentions weren't to make everyone feel special. It was to protect the Ten Commandments. I think this is meaningful because the census is just numbers. But the point is that there are names attached to most of the numbers, which means that people aren't just reduced to numbers, but people as a com in a community as a whole. This past winter, I visited the Holocaust Museum with my Hebrew school class. While studying my parasha, I thought about my experience there and how an event of this kind shows how mass counting and reducing a people to numbers can be dangerous. I saw many videos of the harmful ways the Nazis treated the Jews and how it was so easy to just see the Jews as less than human. Try to imagine six million people. You cannot even comprehend what that means. Everybody just sees a number and doesn't realize that by just seeing a number or a group is stripping people's individualism because if you hear a number, you can't picture a human or their story. I, like many of you, have probably been listening to the news this week and know how the U.S. Embassy moved from Tel Aviv to Israel, sorry, to Jerusalem. And now I see how this Torah portion affects how we interpret the violence that accompanied this event. We should consider the lives that are in danger in both sides of this conflict. Of course, the Torah can't possibly list the name of each Israelite. However, in all my aliyot, I recite the names of the heads of each different tribe, along with the number of Israelites eligible for the army. So perhaps this is an important sign that we need to remember that there are individuals attached to these numbers, and especially that there are real people who put themselves on the line to protect the community as a whole, and the, and the physical item that represented the special relationship between God and the people. Shabbat Shalom. Please rise. Mishabera Chavotino Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov Vimotenu Sarah Mikavra Chavalaya. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless Sadie, Sarah Batahava Veliezer, who has come forward this day to the reading of the Torah in recognition of her desire to live a worthy Jewish life. It's hard to believe that 50 years ago, your great aunt Lois was the first girl to celebrate her bat pizza at BJ. Though you are not the first, you are unique and singular standing on the legacy of the past while forging your own path forward in Torah, in this BJ community, and with your Jewish future as a young woman. You also carry the name of your great-grandma, Sarah, who stood up for what she believed and had a genuine heart. May God bless you, Sadie, with walking in the wilderness of life, building a name for yourself. Not just the name that your parents gave you, but a Shem Tov, a good name for the acts of loving kindness you do the sensitivity that you bring for those less fortunate in your midst, and the desire that you have to build a more equitable and dignified world. May your love of language and stories and the way they express feelings teach you to find your own voice and express who you are and be attentive to the stories of others. May your dedication to gymnastics and the strength and discipline required help you to cultivate the strength of not only the physical but the spiritual strength to be resilient and find your way body and soul. May God continue to be with you in the life that lies before you, just as God has been with you from the day of your birth until now. May it be God's will that you continue to grow in body and spirit and wisdom and humility in the love of all creatures and faithfulness and courage surrounded by your beloved family. And may you always be regarded as gracious and wise in the eyes of God and all humanity. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless Josh, Yehoshua Tov ben Yaakov Rachel, who has come forward to this day to the reading of the Torah in recognition of his desire to live a worthy Jewish life. Josh, from the boy who spent a lot of time by his parents' side on the Israel trip all those years ago, you have grown into a young man open to the world around you. 
You are curious about the world around you and anxious to try new things. May God bless you with the same curiosity and openness with your Judaism, open pathways, opening pathways into Torah as you've done today, and hungry for understanding and engaging. Josh, you are a connector. You love community. Your home is the hub for friends going in and out. And you love to be in relationship with people and ideas. May you always have the blessing of connecting. And even though you are not sure what you believe, may you have the blessing of feeling connected to something beyond yourself, maybe even God, to not only feel called to a higher purpose, purpose, but to also have the humility and the wisdom to live in the in-between and not in the extremes. Josh, you walk in the world comfortable in your own skin and with a mischievous smile. May God bless you to imagine what it is like to walk in someone else's skin. And with your open heart, walk on a path of justice, righteousness, and peace. May God continue to be with you in the life that lies before you, just as God has been with you from the day of your birth until now. May it be a God's will that you continue to grow in body and spirit, in wisdom and humility, in the love of all creatures, in faithfulness and courage, surrounded by your beloved family, and may you always be regarded as gracious and wise in the eyes of God and all humanity. Seder Nasata Torah, page one. We need you. We're not done. <laughs> page one eighty three.
announcements beginning with uh, big mazal tov to Josh and to Sadie, to all their families, all their loved ones on the Shabbat of celebration. Also to Anne Libertalis and uh, Ron Newman on the birth of their son Yotam and uh, to rabbis Sarah, Daniel and Luca who has received their ordination at the Jewish Theological Seminary this past Thursday, and who are moving on, each one to lives of leadership in the Jewish community and Torah. We bless them that uh, their leadership bring a lot of people, a lot of students to Torah and to Masim Tovim and to Mitzvot. We'd like to offer Condolences to Carolyn Meyer Wartels and Gary Wartels and their children Rebecca Noah and their entire family and the death of Carolyn's mother, Marsha Meyer. And of course our hearts are with once again with the victims and the wounded of another shooting, this time in Santa Fe High School in Santa Fe, Texas. On and on and on the victims go. I would like to invite everyone this evening to return here at 9.30 for the service of the first evening of Shavuot, which will be followed by the program that uh, our music director, Dan, will now describe. Shabbat Shalom. So um, we put together a really exquisite, ambitious, adventurous program for tonight um, from 10 o'clock till about midnight. And more than in, want to encourage you to come, we really need you to come because you're going to be an indispensable part of this program. Um, we're going to have wonderful musicians here. One of them is here with us tonight, uh, this morning, Arun, and four other fantastic classical Indian musicians. Um, we're going to have BJ clergy with us and, and a fantastic um, poet who's going to do spoken word that relates to themes from the Torah and Shavuot. We're going to have teachings from the rabbis and all of this um, running together, woven together through liturgical song. Um, so everything is going to be interwoven and the reason we need you here is that you're going to be singing with us. Um, we have printed booklets with the songs and the songs are all based in call and response form and we need you here to fulfill that role with us and to take this program as high as we can. Um, I, was, I was saying last night that I've, I, I know there are programs that happen downtown and here uptown at the JCC at different Jewish centers and they're really great programs. I've been invited to do stuff at the, in these places over the years. There is nothing nearly as ambitious and innovative as what's going to happen here tonight. I'm, I'm really being honest, so please come. The program tonight will be followed by a night, an all-night study led by our fellow Tobias, by Rabbi Sarah Krinsky, by Felician, by myself. At 4.45 in the morning, we will dive in the sunrise service for the first day of Shavuot. Those who wish to 
go home and return, can return. Those who have to stay for part of the night are welcome for part of the night. Anything that works, but please do some learning and come and be with us this evening. Tomorrow morning, those who want to go to sleep and wake up a little later, we'll have a fila at 10 o'clock in the morning here tomorrow morning, followed, weather permitting, by a picnic in Riverside Park. Second evening Shavuot service on Sunday at 7.30. And uh, Monday morning, second day Shavuot service with Hallel in Yiskor and the reading of the book of Ruth. 9.30 in the morning here on Monday. We hope that you will be with us. Finally, I want to, uh, two things, invite everybody to Kiddush that is uh, sponsored in honor of uh, uh, Sarah and uh, Daniel on their ordination, as well as by the Lazer and to Kovacs family. Uh, we are welcome to go through this door and join us in the third floor for Kiddush. At the end of the tefillah, we're going to have a brief message by the First Lady of New York, Shirley McRae, who will tell us briefly about her initiative calling, called Thrive Together, a, week, a weekend for mental health. She will be here to speak just for a few minutes after Musaf. We rise now for Musaf, Hasik Kaddish, page 184. I'm 
ברקות שלך כתוב לאמור. אם לא חנוני לעולם, לא העיר ציון, אלא דור ודור, הללויה. אם לא חנוני לעולם, אלא העיר ציון, לדור ודור, הללויה. לדור ודור נגיד גוד לך, ולנצח נצחים קדושתך נקדיש. ושפקתך לא הנה מפינוי עמו של עם ועד, כי אל מלך גדול וקדוש אתה ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. about the time for the second evening of Shavuot. It's not 7.30 tomorrow evening, but 8.30, 
second evening Shavuot tomorrow, 8.30. It's listed at 7.30, but we'll do it at 8.30. 7.30. Don't believe evening. what you read. Ankelo Hainu 204. Please remain standing. You'll find the mourners' kaddish on page 207. Yitkandal veYitkadash shemer ama be'alma divra kirvute veYamlich malchute chayichon uviyomichon uchayei dechol bet Yisrael ba'galah uvizman kariv veimru amen yeh shemer abba mevarach le'alam ulalme almaya itbarach veishtabach veitpaar veitromam veitnase. Vithadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Sheme, de Kucha, Brihu, Leila, Minkol, Virchata, Veshirata, Tushpechata, Venechamata, Damiran, Vealma, Vimru, Amen. Yeish, Lamar, Abamin, Shemaya, Chaim, Alenu, Vealkol, Israel, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom, Vimromav, Uya, Ose Shalom, Alenu, Vealkol, Israel, Vealkol, Yoshvei, Tevel, Vimru, Amen. We welcome uh, this morning to our community Charlene McRae, who is the First Lady of New York City. She has redefined the role of the First Lady of the city, advancing an ambitious agenda to address challenges that affect our city, from gender equity to domestic violence to mental health and addiction. She's recognized nationally as a powerful champion 
for mental health reform, and she is the architect of Thrive New York City, the most comprehensive mental health plan of any city or state in the nation. In 2016, the First Lady created the city's first weekend of, mental, of faith for mental health with more than a thousand participating houses of worship. In 2017, that number doubled, and this weekend, through the initiative Thrive Together, a weekend for mental health, she has expanded this movement to over 2,500 houses of worship in New York City, as well as to cities and houses of worship across all 50 states, Washington DC and Puerto Rico. You know that we have been intensifying our work to promote uh, for people who suffer from mental health, who live with mental health, or for family members and friends and community to come from under the from under hiding and to be able to live with dignity with acceptance with embrace we've been doing this particularly in the last few months so this comes in to our community at a particularly appropriate time that the first lady is here to underline this message we no longer are going to accept that people who live with mental illness or their families or friends have to hide and have to live in humility we all believe and embrace that uh, embrace the message that we call for dignity for everyone whomever they are whatever they suffer from whatever they carry whatever burden and so we welcome the first lady here i would like to also acknowledge that uh, helen rosenthal is here also this morning so uh, it is a wonderful opportunity to welcome you here Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Rabbi Roli and Rabbi Felicia for inviting me to join today's service and for everything that you do for this community. Hello, BJ. <laughs> I am so delighted to be here in this sanctuary, which is incredibly beautiful. My words do not do it justice. I, I heard that it would be amazing and it is much more than I could have imagined. To be here on such a joyous day is, is really special. I want to say Stady and Joshua, congratulations to you and your families. They must be so proud of you. You are now full members of this wonderful community of people who practice their Jewish faith by living Jewish values. And of course, BJ has led the way in the fight for social justice and inclusion, leaving an indelible mark on our city's history. So thank you. Thank you all for everything that you've done. This week, synagogues all around the world are reading the Book of Numbers, named in part because the Jews stood to be counted. And this weekend, BJ is counted among thousands of faith communities across the nation. The Thrive Together Weekend for Mental Health is all about how we take care of one another. We are coming together to heal our families, our friends, our neighbors. It's a collective mitzvah, no? <laughs> and it's urgently needed. So many people are suffering in silence. So I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you have been touched by someone who has suffered from mental illness? addiction, either directly or because of somebody that you care about. Can you please raise your hand? Uh-huh. I see almost every hand is raised. Um, and I, I ask this question everywhere I go, and, and, and usually most of the hands go up. But if I say to the people, if your hand is not up, perhaps, maybe, maybe your friends, your family, your neighbors are simply too embarrassed to talk to you about what they're going through. One in five people have a mental health challenge, which means the other four in five are friends, family, neighbors, and they're affected by this. How can your sister, or your brother, or your cousin be going through uh, such suffering and you are not affected by it, right? I know for myself that I could never not be touched by such a thing. There are people who are struggling and invisible to us right here in this neighborhood 
on this block and right here in the BJ community. We are all touched by these diseases, whether we know it or not, and we must all be part of the solution. We can all be helpers and healers, and education is the first step. Despite how common these diseases are in our society, most people have very little understanding of mental illness and substance use disorders, and it's not our fault. We didn't grow up with this information, but the city has many resources to help. We'll all get out, we'll get all of this information to you in the coming days outside of Shabbat. But the best way to begin educating yourselves is through mental health first aid. This course is completely free and provides a basic understanding of mental illness, substance misuse, and addiction. It also teaches you how to connect people to care. Because we all know what to do when someone is bleeding, right? We all know what to do. We learned this when we were very young. Clean the area around the wound. Apply a bandage. Apply pressure if it doesn't stop. But we don't know what to do if someone is suffering from a panic attack. Or what to do if someone is suffering from depression. What do you do if your partner is drinking too much? Or if you have a friend who struggles to get out of bed week or after week after week? Just imagine if we all had the skills to respond safely and appropriately when people need help. Imagine how much suffering we could ease and even prevent. Now, BJ is already ahead of the game on this front. You hosted a mental health first aid training here last week. Did anyone here take it? Anyone? Ah, oh, I see a hand back there. Well, I'm glad I'm here to remind you of this extraordinary opportunity. And I hope BJ will host more trainings in the future. It's absolutely free. We provide a trainer. And the more people who take this course, I think, that the more it helps us to eliminate the stigma, the shame, the silence that too often accompanies mental illness and, and substance misuse and addiction. So I encourage every single one of you to get trained. This focus on mental illness and the addiction is, is deeply, deeply personal to me. When I was growing up, my parents suffered from depression and you know, I, I wish they could have gotten help, but this was in the 50s and the 60s, and people really didn't talk about this much. And treatment was not so widely available. Today, help is available. Mental illness and addiction are diseases, just like asthma, diabetes, and they are treatable. They are all treatable. But still too many people are afraid or ashamed to ask for help. Do you know that on average, people wait 10 years before they seek assistance? 10 years. And you know what happens with any disease if you wait 10 years. It, it gets worse. And that is what we see way too much of now these days on our streets and our shelters and our jails. Untreated, the consequences of untreated mental illness are very serious indeed. That's why it's so important for us to talk openly about our experiences with mental health. Sharing your story may give someone else the courage to get the help that they need. Story by story, conversation by conversation, we can dismantle the stigma that has kept people in pain for far too long. And we can make sure everyone in New York City knows there is always hope and there is always help. 1-888-NYC-WELL is our 24-hour helpline and the ultimate connection to care. Any New Yorker who is struggling with mental illness or addiction can call, they can text or chat at any time of day or night and speak with a trained counselor. You can call for a loved one too. Say you don't know how to help someone. Say you don't really know exactly what is going on but their behavior is disturbing to you. You can actually call this number Speak to a trained counselor or a peer counselor, and, and they will help you figure out what are the steps I need to take to help my loved one. When you speak to one of these counselors, it is 100% confidential and 100% free. They can even help you make an appointment with a therapist. And help is available in more than 200 languages. We want everyone to have this number, so I'm going to say it one more time. one 888 NYC well. 
please spread the word. And this weekend, let's pledge together to make sure that no one has to suffer alone. Thank you all for welcoming me here today. And thank you all for doing your part to become helpers and healers. Thank you so much for this wonderful, important message. We welcome you here anytime and every time to spread such uh, important messages to our community. We conclude our tefillah with uh, singing together Adon Olam on page 211, after which everybody, remember, is invited to the third floor for Kiddush through this door into the community house. Adon Olam, Asher Mala Veteren Kol Yetzir Nima Veet Nasa Habet Etzokot Azay Lef Shemo Nikla Veachare Kichlot Hakol Levato Yilok Dora Vehu Aya Vehu We invite all the kids, all the children to come and the need for a bracha, for a blessing. Where are all the kids? Shalom, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Everybody is welcome to the third floor through the entrance on your left. <laughs>